All right, so let's talk about the nucleosynthesis of the chemical elements, or basically the origin of the elements. Here's an outline of how everything really began, but I'm going to go through each of these step by step. First, let's talk about what is the origin of the elements? Well, first off, nucleosynthesis is the making of elements through nuclear reactions. So we're talking about uh, fusion. Big Bang nucleosynthesis states that all elements formed from protons and neutrons in a sequence of neutron captures and beta decays soon after the Big Bang. This was proposed by these three guys. Um, Alpha, Bethy, and Gamma, which we see that they got Alpha, Beta, Gamma here. And they won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1967. Well, then come along this group in 1983. They won the Nobel Prize because they said the elements were synthesized inside the stars and that nuclear processes were well-defined stages of stellar evolution. Okay, so... Now we have two different ideas for how the origin of the elements came about. How did the elements come about? So let's look into this a little bit further. So let's talk about the Big Bang. Before the Big Bang and before what we call inflation, um, what existed before that? Well, we have no idea. We think it was a very dense soup that was super hot, um, hotter than 10 to the 30 Kelvin. But we have not been able to determine anything that occurred prior to 10 to the negative 43 seconds after the Big Bang. So there's still a lot we don't know about what actually um, occurred right there at the Big Bang or even before it. Now, inflation is the super fast expansion of that soup from basically the size of a single atom all the way to a grapefruit in a tiny fraction of a second. And then it just keeps going. So first we start with this quark gluon plasma. Well, first let's talk about what gluons are. Gluons are what hold quarks together. Remember quarks are what make up protons and neutrons. And so during this time, which is 10 to the negative 40 seconds after the Big Bang, um, so we started with this primordial soup and now at 10 to the negative 40 seconds after, we know that quarks are being formed. All six types of them are formed, so um, up, down, top, bottom, strange, and charm are all formed, but it's still too hot for them to bind together um, and for the gluons to kind of help them form protons and neutrons. So basically we have positively and negatively charged quarks that are super, super hot and in plasma form at this point. All right, then at 10 to the negative 33 seconds after the Big Bang, you see the temperature is coming down. Um, the, the universe is now cooling off enough. The quarks are going to start binding. They're going to bind in threes to form protons and neutrons. So depending on what um, three quarks bind together, we'll give you the proton and the neutron. Okay, so first we had the quarks form. Now they are forming protons and neutrons. All right, next we have electrons and other leptons formed. This is at 10 to the negative 12 seconds after the Big Bang. You see it has cooled off to 10 to the 17th Kelvin. All right, leptons. Leptons are fundamental particles that are similar to quarks, and there are six of these. Um, basically, a lepton is an electron, okay? So the cousins or brothers and sisters of electrons are leptons. At this point, though, it's still much too hot for these electrons or leptons to bind to anything such as the protons or neutrons that have just been formed. All right, woo, the first second of the Big Bang is now over. Crazy, right? All that happened in one second after the Big Bang. All right, next we have hydrogen and helium nuclei. Okay, so we don't have electrons on them yet, but we are getting some hydrogen and helium nuclei forming. Um, protons and neutrons are starting to bind together and they're forming these nuclei. This is 10 seconds after the Big Bang, but we're only getting two elements forming, either hydrogen or helium. The electrons are still not going to be able to bind to these nuclei. So basically you have a mixture of positively charged nuclei, because remember the nuclei are positive because they have protons and neutrons. Protons are positive. And then there's these negatively charged electrons that are all super, super hot and in the plasma state.
At this point, light cannot shine because the universe is like a super hot fog. This is known as the Big Bang nucleosynthesis, okay, that hydrogen and helium were formed from the Big Bang. Now, as you see, um, this will give you a little idea of how hydrogen and helium nuclei are actually formed. So, hydrogen nuclei, uh, nuclei are a proton and a neutron, and that makes hydrogen 2. And then two hydrogen 2s can make a hydrogen 3 and a hydrogen 1 isotope. Okay, so there's three different isotopes of hydrogen that formed. This is 75% of the nuclei that are produced during this time period. Now, helium nuclei are also produced from two hydrogen 2s um, hydrogen slamming into one another, and they can make a helium 3 and eject a neutron, or they could make a helium 3 um, by a hydrogen 2 and a hydrogen 1 and, and eject a gamma particle, or you can have a hydrogen 2 and hydrogen 3 make a helium 4 and eject a neutron, okay? But this is only 25% of what we make, so mostly we're making hydrogen at this point. All right, now three minutes after the Big Bang, we've cooled off much more. Now the universe is going to be cool enough for these nuclei, these positive nuclei, to attract the negative electrons. So now we get our first neutral atoms. Still just going to be hydrogen and helium, but we do get those. Electromagnetic ra radiation, such as light, is now able to travel through this universe. All right, so after that, oh skip the slide there. After that, very little is going to happen for a very long time. The temperature is too small and the density is too small. So at this point we only have hydrogen and helium. Now galaxy and star formation via gravitation is going to have to advance the synthesis of the hydrogen and helium elements to make heavier elements that we know exist. So as the matter starts to um, come towards one another to make the galaxies and the stars, then you get a higher temperature and a higher density. And then you're going to have inside these stars reactions that involve charged particles and therefore stellar nucleosynthesis or the making of atoms, new elements from um, stars is a very slow process. So let's look at this. So 3 times 10 to the 5th years after the Big Bang, so it's a long time, gravity starts to pull hydrogen atoms together. They get pulled into clumps, and then as they get pulled into clumps, the atoms start to speed up into a hot gas. Eventually, the hydrogen atoms are moving so fast that they start fusing or slamming into one another and making helium. And then this releases a huge amount of energy, and the gas starts to glow. Boom, a star is born. This is what our sun does. It takes hydrogen, slams it in together, makes helium, and releases a great amount of energy as we know. All right, now after the star fuses all of the hydrogen in the inside of the star, it's going to start to fuse helium. Now because the helium is more massive than hydrogen, okay, remember you got more protons and neutrons in helium than hydrogen, eventually you get enough helium and the helium will collapse into the core of the star, leaving just the unfused or unreacted hydrogen on the outside of the star. Now when helium is fused, you take two helium, it makes a beryllium isotope that's unstable, beryllium-8. You see its um, half-life is super, super short, so it doesn't really stay around long. So what elements do the stars make? Well, if you look here, you see there's a big mass gap as far as uh, what elements are made between atomic number 5 and atomic number 8. Okay, so atomic number 5 and 8 they do not even rank on the chart of abundance here because they are so very little produced and therefore very little present today in the universe. So if the star can't make the beryllium, what's it going to make? Well, it's going to have to make carbon. So it's going to have to actually take two heliums, slam them into a beryllium-8, which is super unstable as we know, and then it's going to... Um, you know, it makes the beryllium-8, which is alive for a fraction of a second. That beryllium-8 then slams into another helium over here, and you get carbon-12. Carbon-12, as we know, is super stable. Well, 
As the star uses all of the helium and the beryllium to make carbon, the cycle is going to continue. So now the um, carbon that is made, you get enough of it and it collapses into the core and now you have the unfused helium and um, you really don't have enough beryllium because it has such a short, short half-life. Now you have that helium layer in the core and you see that eventually as you fuse more and more things you get more and more layers. So here we have all these layers. So we have the hydrogen, the helium, then the carbon, and then we'll move to oxygen, neon, magnesium, silicone, and then finally iron. This entire process is known as stellar nucleosynthesis, so the making of the elements from the stars. Nucleosynthesis can occur up to iron. So when you have a star near the end of its lifetime, it has several rings, but it stops at iron. So here you get some, when you get the carbon, the carbon makes neon and sodium. Um, neon is the stable isotope here. And then these neons slam together to make um, oxygen. And then the oxygen slams together to make the silicone. Okay. Now notice our life cycle here. Okay. So hydrogen takes the longest, then helium, carbon, and then after the carbon, it gets super short. So neon only happens for a year. Oxygen burning only occurs for six months. And silicone burning, one day. And then the star makes iron. Now what happens when it makes iron? Well when it makes iron, which is 10 to the ninth years after the Big Bang, that's basically the dead end for fusion. The reason is because nuclear fusion reactions involving iron do not release energy. So when you're slamming these atoms together up to iron, you're getting energy out. But then after, when you start making iron, Iron can no longer slam itself into anything else and produce energy. Now it takes energy. So you build up enough iron from the silicon burning and then that heavy iron collapses to the core and pressure builds up because that iron's not fusing and then suddenly the core will explode and you'll have a supernova explosion. Now supernova explosions are what we talk about when stars die and um, and basically the temperature gets so so hot in the core because the pressure increases so much that you get new fusion reactions that happen these new fusion reactions are responsible so for every element that we have on the periodic table that's not man-made after iron okay so a lot of the other elements this also explains why the other elements are less abundant than um, the helium and the carbon all right so as the galaxies start to cluster together under the new gravity, first stars are dying and they're spewing all these heavy elements into space. Now these new heavy elements, he he sorry, heavy elements that are made, they eventually start to cluster together and this is where we get our planets, okay? So the planets that are closest to our sun and our galaxy happen to be made of heavier metals and then the um, planets further out tend to be made of gas. All right, now if you look at the abundance of elements in our solar system, you see hydrogen, helium, very, very high, lithium and boron, and beryllium, very low, and we know why. And then we see that we jump back up with carbon and oxygen and such, and then we get down to the elements past iron, and it dramatically drops off. Now you know the reasons for all of this. Okay, so basically just to understand that we start with hydrogen and helium, and then we kind of skip over lithium and beryllium there. Um, and then, we, you know, we go on to carbon all the way up to iron. And then past iron, we are not getting um, any more fusion. Then we have supernovae explosion that make everything past iron. That is not man-made. And then we have these little gray elements that are highlighted. Those are all our man-made elements. So nuclear reactions are very crucial. Um, they produce all the elements that we depend on. They provide the energy in the stars, including that of our sun. There are approximately 270 stable nuclei in the uni universe. By studying all these reactions, we have produced more than 3,000 unstable nuclei, and there are more than 4,000 unstable nuclei, which we know nothing about. So will you find the next element, the next atom? And remember, 
your parents told you you really are star material.